Hey, my name is Nick Breeze, and I'm a new media artist, educator, and organizer living and working in Chicago, Illinois. Um, and this tutorial demo essay video is a part of, a, of an ongoing artware project I'm working on called The New Aesthetic.js. The New Aesthetic.js is an executable essay and open source JavaScript artware library for quick reproduction of new aesthetic compositions and related new media art tropes. If you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with the new aesthetic, but in the event that you're not, here's a quick introduction. The new aesthetic was first a series of observations made by British writer, technologist James Brittle and friends, which then turned into a Tumblr blog, which then turned into a panel at South by Southwest, which then provoked a 5,000 word analysis and critique by Bruce Sterling for Wired, which then triggered a whole slew of blog posts by digital artists and tech bloggers across the internet. Some were excited and inspired by it, others were deeply insulted, and many more were just left confused. The new aesthetic presented itself as a new way of seeing and potentially a, a new contemporary digital art movement concerned with the, quote, eruption of the digital into the physical. But the new aesthetic, like most things the postmodern web tells us, isn't actually anything new. Rather, like every other bit of digital data on the internet, it's a kind of remix. This series of hyperlinks Brittle and Friends dubbed the new aesthetic is itself a mashup of works and ideas which have for some time been a part of new media art culture, DIY maker, hacker culture, underground computer art scenes, critical software studies, post-internet animated GIFs released by chiptune labels on surf clubs, etc. In fact, its self-described metaphysical framing of aesthetics is itself a pretty stale vector view. Still, it's all too easy to get lost in semantics and firsts, and that's definitely not my intention here, so all newness aside, I'm much more interested in the conversation's uh, mimetic momentums. And though the new aesthetic is more of a mood board than a manifesto, like the numerous posts on its Tumblr blog, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And while the individual samples that make up the new aesthetic have been reduced to new media art tropes via their aggregation, really, who am I to get in the way of reductive practices? So instead, I thought I might help further the codification cause by collecting the more prominent tropes in the form of a, an open source JavaScript artware library so that they may become more accessible and executable by the user. So like a friend and colleague once said to me at a public presentation of one of my tutorials, you're killing your art. So let's get started. Artist and researcher Greg Bornstein has compared the new aesthetic to a recent movement in philosophy called object-oriented ontology. So it seemed only appropriate to use an object-oriented programming language like JavaScript to codify it. The new aesthetic.js is an HTML5 library, which you can download from the site, uh, nickbreeze.com slash the new aesthetic, where you'll also find detailed documentation, links to further reading, and the code examples in this video. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go over a few quick demos just to give you a basic idea uh, of how this works. So here I've got a basic HTML5 page with a script tag referencing the library on my repository. The library is basically this an A object, which has different methods associated with it. So we'll start by adding the background method, which is .bg. We'll save it, and then open this composition in a browser. So this is the basic Photoshop transparency layer. Uh, interface aesthetics are a big part of the new aesthetic, and this one in particular is a pretty popular trope. Most of the methods in the library take different parameters. So the bg method takes a color parameter uh, in the form of a string. So this can be something like red. Or you can type in a hex value like that. Or the string uh, rainbow if you want to get a uh, sort of rainbowed grid. But for now, I'll just leave the default uh, PSD look. We can then start layering things on top of this background. So another big part of the new aesthetic is pixelization. So the library also includes a pixelize image method, which takes as its parameter a locally saved image file. I've got in this image folder here a pic of the Dalai Lama with a rainbow umbrella that I'll use. I'll go ahead and specify that here in my method. And when I refresh my page, you get that uh, your source image uh, pixelized. Uh, there are a couple additional parameters which let me um, specify X and Y coordinates for my image. I can also increase the amount of pixelization with another parameter. So another popular trope included in the library are retro icons. You can use the icons method 
uh, and specify which icon you want, uh, the X and Y coordinates, and the size uh, you want your icon to be. So you can see here the classic uh, Xerox file icon. And if we make it a little bigger, you've got yourself a new aesthetic inspired composition with only three lines of code. Another method is the glitch image method. Glitch aesthetics um, are also a big part of the new aesthetic conversation. So I'll change my pixelize image method to glitch image method and more or less leave the same parameters. I'll refresh my browser and now we have a glitch Dalai Lama. Another big part of the new aesthetic conversation is satellite imagery. So I've included another background method called Google Maps. To use this method, you first need to set your API key, which you can get uh, for free from Google. This is my personal API key. Google says I'm not supposed to show it to anyone. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm sure they've got a good reason. So don't copy this code. Just uh, Google search Google Maps API key, and you can grab a free one uh, for yourself. And just copy and paste that into your code. Then inside the Google Maps method, you include a few parameters. First, the type of map specified as a string. So this can be either roadmap, satellite, hybrid, or terrain. I'm going to go ahead and put satellite. And then a set of longitude and latitude coordinates, uh, which you can copy and paste from a Google Maps page. So refresh that. So you can also specify how much zoom to include. So you can go back and get a little closer. I'm going to go ahead and replace the image with another classic icon. In this case, the classic Mac fill bucket by Susan Kerr. Uh, specify the XY coordinates and the size. Then refresh my page. I'm going to go back and change the color of the bucket to white and the paint to red so that we can see that a little better. So there are also some special icons which require their own methods. Uh, one of these is the hourglass icon, which is an animated icon. I'm going to specify the X and Y coordinates and make the size fairly large. Refresh the page. And there you go. I'll also go ahead and change the latitude and longitude of my Google Maps method. Refresh, and you've got yourself another piece of net art uh, with only three lines of code. So as you can see, this library is very conducive to speed projects. So obviously, if you know some basic JavaScript, you can get a bit more dynamic with this. For example, I'll grab a new set of coordinates from Google Maps, paste those in. Then I'll use the icons method to create a space invader icon. But rather than typing in specific parameters, I'll throw in some variables. Ran x for the x coordinate. Type in ran y for the y coordinate ran size for the size, and ran color for the color. Then I'll go ahead and declare these up here. Set ran x to any random number up to the width of my window or composition. And then do the same for ran y, give it a random number along the height of my composition. Then I'll set the size to a random number between uh, 4 and 16. And then to create a random color value, I'll do a quick Google search for uh, JavaScript random color and just copy and paste this fine snippet from jQuery guru Paul Irish. After that, I'll go ahead and wrap this all up in a function uh, called alien invasion. Then I'll create an interval to run this function once every second. Go back to my browser, refresh the page, and there you have it, alien invasion. So. Anyways, hopefully that gives you some more new perspective on the new aesthetic. Uh, like I said before, the website has a lot more detailed documentation on all the methods in the library, including some of the methods I didn't go over in this video, like the Photoshop ants method, also the face Facebook thumb method, uh, which can be set to include the amount of times people have shared your composition on Facebook with an additional PHP script. Also, there's a pixelized GIF and glitch GIF method uh, for pixelizing and glitching animated GIFs. HTML5 Canvas doesn't support animated GIFs because apparently there aren't any net artists on the working groups nor 
Are there apparently very many experimental new media art institutions on the W3C for reasons beyond the scope of this video? Uh, so I had to write a little workaround, which is also described in detail in the documentation. Also, there are a few developer tools, including a theory object, which is a kind of meta space for you to include any didactic info for your piece in the browser's uh, console window, and also a where my mouse at method, which is a tool I included to help with positioning, uh, since there's a lot of methods that take x and y coordinates in the library. So there you have it, the new aesthetic.js. Any thoughts or questions, please feel free to email or leave comments in the video. Also, don't forget the Artware Library is open source and licensed copyright, uh, so feel free to copy, paste, and fork as you wish.